Hello Gambians, distinguished audience. As the coronavirus pandemic continues to be a grave concern globally and nationally, my government continues to remain vigilant and steadfast in reviewing and intensifying measures to prevent, contain, and manage its spread within our borders. In less than two weeks after my last address to the nation, the situation in the country has changed. As confirmed by the Ministry of Health, so far, more than 30 tests have been conducted. Three have been positive, and one is still inconclusive. Only one person among the confirmed cases in the country passed away. With regard to the unfortunate incident of the people who absconded, almost half of them have been traced. The public is advised to report any person who has escaped quarantine and to be aware that hiding suspects who pose a threat to public health is contrary to the laws of the land. Fellow Gambians, we know with certainty that mass movement of people and public gatherings are threats to the containment of COVID-19. Therefore, in addition to the measures mentioned in my last address, decisions have been taken to impose new restrictions. To curtail our exposure to infection through close interactions, my government has taken the decisions to scale down government operations. Accordingly, all heads of government institutions, parastatals, private enterprises, and other institutions have been instructed to scale down their activities with minimal staff to perform basic services. Where feasible, staff can work from home. At the private sector level, all non-essential services are declared suspended with immediate effect. Only essential services, such as emergency medical services, sale of essential items and commodities will continue. I have been informed that there are enough supplies of essential commodities for the immediate and medium term needs of the country. In this light, strict measures have been devised to cop attempts to hold or hike the prices of basic commodities. I implore the business community to continue to cooperate in stabilizing the prices of all basic commodities. The Gambians and all residents in the Gambia must understand that business is not as usual. Hence the need to take strict measures to protect ourselves. Fellow Gambians, distinguished audience, on 18 March 2020, I signed the first proclamation in relation to the pandemic, which was published in the Gazette under Section 34.1b of the 1997 Constitution. 
in it. I declare that a situation exists which may lead to a state of public emergency if it passes. I have now signed a second proclamation declaring a state of public emergency throughout the Gambia. Under this proclamation, the following measures shall be enforced with effect from today, 27 March 2020. One, all non-essential food outlets in all markets and enclosed shopping areas shall be closed. Two, all non-essential public places such as bars, cafeterias, cinemas, video clubs, gymnasiums, museums, nightclubs, public swimming pools, event halls, casinos, gaming parlors, and sporting venues shall be closed. Three, all public places of worship shall be closed. The number of people attending any social gathering, such as weddings, naming ceremonies, and funerals, shall be restricted to a maximum of 10 people. All public transport shall carry half of the total number of passengers they are allowed to transport by law. In invoking the powers invested in me as president under the Emergency Powers Act of the laws of the Gambia, this is one of a series of regulations I have signed, starting with the freezing of prices of all essential commodities to prevent any form of hoarding. Already, an essential commodities committee has been set up to monitor and enforce these regulations. In this regard, I appeal to the goodwill of the business community to respect these measures for the general welfare of our people. Notwithstanding the restrictions, the general public is reassured that essential services will continue. These include services provided by banks, petrol stations, traders and vendors in food and basic commodities, in the markets, supermarkets, and corner shops. However, this must be done in accordance with the WHO recommended social distancing guidelines. Fellow Gambians, my government has approved a $500 million emergency fund, which the ministries of health and finance will work on for disbursement and use to fight COVID-19 menace. I seize this occasion to specifically thank the private sector, as well as all philanthropists and individuals for their financial support. Your contributions will go a long way in complementing government's efforts in this joint fight. I thank you all. On behalf of everyone, I also commend the national response teams, committees and frontline workers for their invaluable service to the nation. While my government continues to take leadership to guide the entire process, I extend deep appreciation to the wider community, 
including religious leaders, civil society, all Gambian citizens and people living in the Gambia for their cooperation. In a similar vein, I call on all political party leaders and civil society organizations to work with my government in the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. All efforts and cooperations during these trying moments are appreciated very much indeed. Once again, I urge all of us to take the pandemic as a serious threat which requires all our collaborative and cooperative efforts to overcome. Let us cooperate fully with the health and security authorities so that measures adopted to stop the spread of the coronavirus can be effective. This implies maintaining high personal hygiene standards that include regular hand washing, avoiding hand shaking, observing social distancing, and all other regulations and measures necessary to fight COVID-19. Long live the Gambia. I thank you for your attention. Welcome back and on this special night on a special broadcast as we've talked about the fight against the COVID-19 that is the coronavirus pandemic across the globe. Well, in the case of the Gambia, the President, His Excellency Adama Barrow has given a statement and has declared a state of public emergency. And I have with me in the studio Mumudun Boj and Ade Drame. We are going to discuss extensively the President's statement and the declaration that he made to declare a state of public emergency. Wouldn't board in your life in the Gambia? Is this something that you have experienced before? I mean, I'm, I'm a baby. <laughs> I mean, grown ups, my, my parents' generation, I think we, we really never seen something, anything of this scale before, really. So everybody, it, it seems surreal it, it, to me. It doesn't seem real at all. So we're all trying to adapt to this new thing. So. We knew that it was going to come to this. Once we had our first um, confirmed case, this is what's been happening all over the world. Sooner or later, numbers will go up and then you will begin to lock down. This is really what we expected really, from the president at this point. Um, Mr. Adedrame, have you been in this kind of situation before? What has been your experience? Nothing quite like this, but of course, as someone from Sierra Leone, uh, my own country went through Ebola. Uh, but the difference this time is, uh, of course, this is the reason is that a pandemic is of course because it's global and um, the whole world is feeling this now and what the Gambia is going through now is what other countries have been going through gradually and in fact of course some a lot worse and in fact in many cases uh, moves from the president or prime minister are much more stringent than what we have seen and heard from His Excellency the President today. Um, in Sierra Leone, of course, um, these things, uh, the President says something there. It's not, it will no longer be business as usual. As usual. 
And that was what we found in Sierra Leone during the Ebola crisis. We are people who like, like to touch and feel very tactile people, Africans. And, you know, we say, you know, not all Africans are the same, but I think that's one of the things you can say about most Africans. We like to touch, we like to slap hands and, 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 and hug each other. Suddenly, you couldn't hug your wife, your child, your best friend, family members. And we are being forced by this blasted disease to change habits. Some might even say things that are ingrained in our DNA. So, yes, Ebola was kind of similar, but this is on a whole different level. Well, drastic measures being mentioned there by the president, um, which is, of course, going to restrict everyday life, everyday movement, um, as we are used to getting into public transport and going to work, going to the market, going shopping freely. No police officer is going to stop you on the way and ask you questions. Why do you have to go, you know, in numbers at this time? But that all seemed to change. Um, how would you see life under these circumstances? Absolutely. I mean, we have to be honest about these things. It will be extremely difficult. I mean, we know that generally in Africa, for instance, 85% of people earn their living from informal economy. So they have to go to work every day, look at our transport, cramped. We have to go to the market, the way we live at home, shared accommodation. So it is going to be extremely, extremely difficult. But, and, and some journalists have been complaining about this. It seems as if um, we've been focusing more on the epidemiology, <laughs> much more than perhaps the socioeconomic. It, it is true, we do not have much money, you know, as in what Britain is doing or what America is doing with all their stimulus packages and stuff, but yet it wouldn't make the problem go away. So government, yes, they've said that they've um, dedicated, what, 500 million? How are they going to spend it? What sectors would be prioritized? We really do not know. So even with that speech, half of the people who absconded have, um, um, have been traced what does that mean? Give us exact numbers. What, six? Because 14. Quite Almost vague. Almost half. Yeah, vague. So I do not know why. Um, yes, fine, work from home. Um, when it comes to what, um, essential commodities, we've got enough. What does that mean? And for how long? For how long? And he talks, talks about um, short and medium term. What does that mean? So there are so many ifs and buts. Um, there's an emergency now, but yet these ifs and buts, we have to think about them on, before, later on, it comes back to hurt us. Mr. Dalame, is it um, a timeline giving when it comes to state of emergencies, or is it indefinite? There's, there's not been any mention of a two-week period, a three-week period, or a month, as in countries which are in a lockdown. Sure. I think what you're going to hear um, from myself and from everybody else is the word unprecedented. Uh, what we're dealing with now is not something that anybody has experienced. It's not the flu, it's not the cold. You can't say in three months everything will be okay. God forbid, in three months it could be worse for us. Um, uh, Deutsche Welle, BBC, CNN, Al Jazeera, for weeks have been saying, how will Africa cope where countries have really dreadful health systems? Mr. Mboge knows on his drive time show how many times I have complained that African countries, we have presidents who never get medically treated in their own countries. That itself is a signal. If I don't think the health system in my own country is fit enough for me, then surely it's not fit for the rest of my citizens or the voters. That is what we have to deal with. So there is no timeline. There cannot be a timeline. And we can't compare ourselves to China, where the numbers seem to be dwindling to the extent where I think yesterday there was only one coronavirus-related death. That's extraordinary when you consider the fact that Italy now has doubled the number of deaths of China, the fact that the United States has now had over a thousand deaths. These are countries with strong uh, economies and strong health systems they have not put a timeline on it. In spite of the nonsense of Donald Trump saying that it will be back to business as usual by Easter Friday, a good Friday, that's a nonsense. Nobody knows. The numbers are going up. New York alone has 30,000 positive cases. Accounts for almost a quarter of the cases in the whole of the United States. So you cannot give a timeline. 
short, medium, long term. What you can do is plan as best you can. And what is there to help us is I saw a broadcast today. I've been watching the daily broadcast from the WHO and also from the United Nations, uh, Antonio Guterres, the, the Secretary General of the UN. And he's trying to marshal the richer nations. Yes, they have the problem with it. But what he's saying and what they're all saying is the poorer nations are the ones that are really going to suffer. So it's really good to hear the Saudis saying that they're actually putting aside funds to help the poorer nations because they know they will be hardest hit. So that was a bit of good news in, in the midst of all this dreadful news that we've been getting. Uh, Mr. Boris, um, let's talk about the points here. Um, the sale of non-essential commodities suspended. and um, Obviously, it's not business as usual as he called it. Um, when you talk about non-essential commodities, what are we talking about here? Are we talking about a certain restaurant selling food? Certainly food would be essential, <laughs> because I don't think we're referring here to, to, to restaurants. Um, I don't know, maybe stuff like people who are selling building materials. I'm not yes, sure yes. whether that would be essential right, right now. now. Right now yes. Stuff like that would, would have to stop, yeah. naturally. And, 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 and others, you know, when it doesn't have to do with life and death, when it doesn't have to do anything to do with food, possibly it wouldn't be essential right now. Because we already said that the, the corner shop would be open. Sure. So the stuff that I might need daily, soap, and stuff like that, I might be able to get with sugar, That's right. tea, coffee, and bread, 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 and stuff like that. Yes. So th that would still be on. Yes, but, but I think where the, where the confusion might come is because there are two types of non-essential outlets that he mentioned. He mon mentioned non-essential shops, so I'm afraid those new trainers that you want to get, uh, that shop will That's be closed. Right. So exactly. But he also said non-essential food outlets. Okay. So yes. if you're a restaurant selling food, that's it. You have to close. Um, there's no, you know, that's a non, you know, going to a restaurant, start bloody well stay home and cook <laughs> for yourself. But the restaurant will not be allowed uh, to open because that would not be deemed essential. Uh, although there might be people who eat daily at a restaurant, but it, it would not be uh, considered essential food. So it's be interesting because recently what they've been doing was, at least around the Kororo area, is to allow them to sell um, um, takeaway. Yes. I've seen that in the past but two this, days. This, this puts a stop to that. This will be quite <laughs> interesting to see now how it plays out. This puts now. a stop to that. It puts yeah. a stop to that. Yeah. So, 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 so that's it. And, but you even imagine right now, most people, they are worried yeah. with, with, with the coronavirus. Yeah, right. I mean, there are colleagues who told me that they no longer buy street food yes. since this thing broke. Um, yeah. form of any type. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so there's been a lot of fear yeah. in, in terms oh, of what oh, everyday oh, life. Oh. Yeah. You know, even the person that you get close to, um, well, obviously, uh, we've talked about social distancing. He, he mentioned in his, his statement that um, it should be observed strictly in order to, you know, combat the spread of the virus, which is spreading rapidly. Well, in our own case, for now, three have tested positive, one diseased, and, you know, one also inconclusive. Um, there have been over 30 tests that have been made so far. But are the numbers going to increase? Oh, come on, what, what we've seen around the world, they will, when you think rational about it, even the WHO, that was why the WHO director general said, Africa will prepare for the worst. Mm -hmm. We had the initial few numbers, like Senegal, at some point, one or two, suddenly over 100. Over 100 now. That's it. So over here as well, we have to be prepared. In fact, right now, now, now close to 200. 200, that's close a stuff like that. Exactly. To. So here with now three or so, we know that at some point, according to the WHO, it will accelerate. Mm -hmm. It will accelerate, we have to accelerate and peak before it begins to decline. So how many would be affected, uh, how many people would be infected by then? We do not know. That's what we do not know. But the trajectory, we have to prepare for the worst. Well, some of the measures, public transport, yeah. half of what they used to take before. If you have a van, obviously, 14 passengers, it has to be by half. At least seven passengers. Uh, uh, is that a good measure? It's a good measure, and it's ironic that he's made that announcement because just today, without knowing that he was going to make any announcement of this sort, myself and some colleagues were discussing, we'd heard that in Senegal, for example, they'd given examples saying if you had 36, uh, you'd only uh, allowed a, a 12. So it was actually a third of what you're allowed to carry in Senegal. But I think half is good. I think it's going to be one of the more difficult ones to enforce. 
and I have to say this, uh, there's been time and time again when I've said it, kind of half in jest, that people break the law here more than almost any country I know. But people don't see themselves as lawbreakers. Every vehicle which has nicely painted on the side, licensed to carry 12 people, in your dreams, carries 24, 30 or more. How do we change those habits? When this whole thing was spoken about, social distancing, just before we came on today, BBC uh, focused on Africa. They, they had an expert talking, and he said in Africa, it's almost an impossibility because we're not used to that. <laughs> we're just not used to it. So how do you break the habits of our lifetime? Do we get as draconian as in Rwanda, where, as you know, two days ago they shot dead two people who broke the lockdown uh, curfew, shot them dead? Are we going to get to that stage? We're not at lockdown stage yet, but if it escalates and it gets worse, there's every possibility of that. We talking about stringent measures, these uh, it really has nothing to what might come later. Should it get so we, we, we wish, we pray it doesn't get worse, but we have to prepare for the worst. We have to prepare for the worst, and in this time, we um, try to summarize what basically the president has been talking about in the local language. First, in Mandinka, Badi Mola Tomimbe QTV Jibekang, B. Natale Janen, Telongal Badi Mamudu Kajaga, Ding Dunyo Lebe Studio Konojang, Mamudu Mboj, and in Adetarame, Be Mi Sambakali Nandrong, Wolong President B. I Kankula Roleke, Safo, Sembo Mimbe President Mbulu, I Wali Dandi B. Purkajeko. In Kurumin, Ikafai coronavirus, Mojama along COVID 19 Lella, Mihalonga Keta Dunia, Molie, Korea Kupati, and Dung Abejanjan Kangulum, Aliamu Banku Jamal to a Mojamal Faji, Nagambia Jan, Adunta Jane, Cabril Lukun Tambela, and Indomandi, a Mokilim from Fale, Mialonko, Bandala Banko Mora, but a Bangladesh Bankolekan, Alialonko, Ninkurum, Mankechan, or the Ninkurum, a Dunia Beresula, and Dung a Mobile Kiofara, and Unkijate Kuram. I Declaro mil dolke a kaida ni jeko akamunda ko sain ko le tarre nyamo ko tenge ni ko moto le borondi am ila moto borondo ni ngono e ka kiliano mil ta ta la fukiliano tande nani sa akamunda ko wotlande mo borogula o le dunde la moto ko ni atara e be mol sambala por ke samba do ko dulal do ko din kral fan ni mo kebel be la do ko din kral mo be sala jele mil ya lan ko wol se sino so ko le e do ko nyike so, we have to bring the Carola and the private sector. We have to bring the private sector the business. We have to bring the business to the business. We have to bring the business to the business. We have to kawo moto kara moto to sa jena jenda asike bonko be toro di asemo be tora ni obola la fanan na nyin kulliol na furusidol o abe o kono fanan hanin na nyin bade el mialon ko jannin ka bade nyin ke samo nyin molka ka fun nyo madame to ka dia molke fo jannin e be fure nyin di la mario la o fanan be kala kulti mialon ko motang da ma e be sonna wole tare ni na sata motang di tron mol be soto la mil be loi tamandila um, well, maybe police kunda bijele, um, general kunda mulfana bijele, ako committee le bijele miyalan ko le maralan wo sifal. Ni o fanan bote je, kodo le fanan bijele miyalan ko wo be kontene la la. Pa o aliyalan ko mul fwe se sou la kodo la, bankil be yele la la. Um, Isan se wa fe du la la, mi mo petrol station ti wo fanan be yele la la. Ah, kom yin fanan mul la dungo mo rokono kata tani na do kodo wo fanan be kele la la. An no fanan, mbe be kele la la, mi mo lua la si la la. Quite <laughs> Um, ni setan tamet QTV man la sen boka uh, Mumudu Gajaga te ñoo lañ fi uh, normal dañ fi dañ ñew pour jox len news bo xamne um, daily modé um, am ci kamé bi fi wa te dafa melni président bi arama baro dafa joxé ndigal ci ndigal bobu nak amna ay sarta yim téral sarta yoyu nak lu ko waral moy né jangoro bu génn ci aduna bi mu ngi tudda um, coronavirus covid 19 xam ngeen né am sono na dek yu bari dek yu melni italie dek yu melni america china fu ngi commencer reena ñu bari 
Beka bi tamet Gambia dugana fi depi um, bena semen ci kanaw um, reyna fi nit sa nit bobu um, kanla ko joge bangladesh yep hangen ko uh, amna ñu bari ñi nga xamne dañ len test tamit so dafa melni ñetti nit am nañ ko wa bena bi sa dafa de kenen ki tamit ñu koy test wa result ji gena ngoñ so dafa melni dal pour jangoro bi ñu ar ko mu baña law pour joge ci bena nit dem ci bena nit dafa melni legi su fekke julit nga ngay bu ga dem julli juma ya nit yu bari ak imam yi lolu dañ ko teral dafa melni dal dañ ci teral satane juma yi dañ koy tej dañ ñoy tej ci 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 joge ko tay ak yenen bes bu ay tamit top ci tamit ay lu melni bars restaurants ay cafes ay palace kay sports yi ndax football ngay def ndax basketball ngay def palace yoy yeb dañ koy tej joge ko tay lolu tamit president bi joge na ndigal dafa melni tamit suñ ngenté yi suñ wedding ci moy takay ah dafa melni tamit um yenen programme ci tamit dafa melni tamit suñ yenen programme ci ñu melni comme suñ dejji luñ alaw fofu nu moy fukki nit lu passé fi fukki nit rek dafa melni loi bi mu na ci tek lo moy ne police yi mu nañ ci tek sax ñu 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 yobu la ci loi ah dafa melni tamit yenen service ci yu melni bank xam nga ne ñun ñepp soxla xaliss te suñ xaliss ñu ngi ci bank yi ñep dañuy dem ci bank bi pour gene xaliss pour dem jenda yenen ngeen bu ay bo xamne lool lañ bu ko jenda ah dafa melni tamit essence moy petrol station yi ñu tamit du nañ ubbi food supermarkets moy jaye kay yi yi nga xamne lek la ñoy jaye ci supermarket yi tamit nañ ubbi dafa melni tamit am suñ boutique yi nga xamne daf dey nek ci ay johnson yi ni boutique yi nga xamne ñu ngay jaye bota ñu ngay jaye meew ñu ngay jaye sukur yoy tamit dina ubbi so fu nek ni dal dafa melni li la mëna tenka ci gatal ci su mom bok ni all of setan kat yi nga xamne ñu ngay setan ci tv ah ja je fa ci den ñu ngay delo wa ci suñu discussion bi am mr mboj We've talked about the holding of commodities. Well, mm. it has quite been very usual, even without this uh, declaration of state of emergency or this COVID-19 in the Gambia. We've seen it in, in crisis situation, even during the political impasse. People have taken it as a chance of t- time to make profit for, for, for some of the businessmen. Um, the stringent measure, I think it's a good measure. Of course. Um people take advantage of things that will always happen. Will always happen. Perhaps the majority wouldn't. This is the thing, but you will always have um, a minority who will try to take advantage of, of, of things, keeping this to, to make more profit. So it was good that he invoked his powers, this emergent, emergency powers, to stop, um, um, to prevent, try to prevent people from, from doing these things. Because right now, a lot of people would be in, in dire, dire financial difficulty, Let, let's be honest. And the closure, you have no idea for how long. You know what I mean? Not many people would have had savings. So when you look at the socio-economic reality, it, it looks quite dire in, in, in many ways, given the uncertainty of how long it will happen, and not many people do have their savings. So it helps that government intervenes and says that you are not going to do that. We are going to freeze the price at, at, at a certain point. This is an emergency. We are all going to chip in my cash or kind. Well, we all <laughs> going to chip in. Absolutely. Uh, still on that, um, as you know, regularly the Ministry of Health have been giving daily updates about the COVID-19 situation in the Gambia. Uh, well, today at the Edward Francis Small Teaching Hospital, the sanatorium will be used as treatment center for COVID-19 patients, according to the Ministry of Health. Let's get an excerpt of that statement from the Ministry of Health. Samples are collected and the compound remains uh, under quarantine. However, frontline health workers are in dialogue uh, with the community uh, to be able to uh, move the uh, members to uh, one of the quarantine centers. From this index case that tested positive, the people who have been tested have so far all tested negative. We have 215 people on quarantine in various hotels in the country. We would like to appeal to the general public for their continuous support and collaboration in the successful implementation of the COVID-19 surveillance, including contact tracing rapid response 
uh, risk communication to strengthen community-based surveillance at all levels. Yeah, welcome and thank you if you're just joining us. This is a special broadcast. Well, that was the Minister of Health, Amadou Lami Samate, giving updates about the current situation of the COVID-19 in the Gambia. Well, every effort is being put together to stem the spread of the virus in the country. Um, as we were talking about Adedrami, concerning the social distancing and also the stringent measures that been, we've been talking about, that is um, daily. There are people who are dependent on what they sell or they have to go to the market to be able to engage into other activities like selling food stuff and all of that. So if that is curtailed, what is going to be life like yeah. for those kind of people? It's, uh, what we're going to end up having is in the marketplaces uh, enforcement. Uh, the president mentioned the sort of enforcement mainly to do with hoarding and hiking of prices. But there'll have to be other types of enforcement as well. And when Mr. Mboja and myself and Luis had a discussion on drive time, um, and, and we were talking about how unrealistic un, un, un uh, it was for people to actually uh, social distance in the, I mentioned a cartoon that is, pardon the pun, gone viral. Um, and it shows, it says you can either be six feet apart or six feet under. The choice is yours. Um, we will have to change the habits of our lifetime. And as I said, some things that <laughs> you almost think are ingrained in our DNA, um, we will have to change those. But, you know, as the minister said there, um, he's been working tirelessly, actually, uh, in updating us, updating the nation uh, on a daily basis uh, with what has been happening. And, you know, there have been complaints and so on. But I think he and his team are overworked because I did threaten to use this word <laughs> unprecedented what they're having to deal with uh, and so you know no apologies for using the word again um, they've never experienced anything like this when Ebola happened it happened in other countries yes you had you know Ebola response uh, project and, and whatever here and they go around in their fancy white vans but it never hit the Gambia now this one has hit us and a person has died and that made everybody wake up and, and say okay social distancing, because that person, as we know, was a preacher, who when he preached, we are told, was surrounded by lots and lots of people. He would have t uh, touched and shaken hands with lots of people. Um, and contact tracing of everybody who was there at every place that he preached. So these are the things that we're having to deal with now. So every time that the, the uh, Minister of Health comes out to make a statement, you know, he always updates us on, on you know, 215, uh, people in, in quarantine, um, you know, um, and uh, that's the reality of it. And it, it could probably be much greater because for every one of those, when we found out again with Ebola, when you interview somebody and said, you know, where have you been today? Who have you interacted with? You start listing names and names and names. And as again, as I mentioned on drive time in Sierra Leone, my own family doctor who I'd known all my life, he died from Ebola because he touched a friend. And, and realize too late. Quite shocking and devastating. Absolutely. Well, and, and, you know, I, I was talking to um, a WHO representative the, mm. the other day, and we touched on this very thing, you know, we're talking about him. He said that Ebola had prepared us sure. to, say, to, to face this sort of things. Then I said to him, well, maybe whatever was prepared worked in preventing it from coming in. Mm. What happened, can't you that? But we were never tested in terms of how to contain things once they've entered. So we, we are having to, to learn about those things. And then the minister talked about the quarantine currently they're doing. But again, we've heard one or two disturbing things about this quarantine. In the first place, how did the 14 escape? Was there, wasn't there any security? Because with, with quarantine, it is implicit. Of course, you want the consensus, but it is implicit that there would be security. They would have that coercive power. Strict security. Strict, absolutely. So, so, so these are the things. And, and, and governments as well, let's understand our state, how it works. We know that when it comes to enforcement, we have many shortcomings. So the self-policing. This is where we must show maturity, really. There are many things, critical gaps within the, the, the state setup. So it will take ordinary human beings, us to self-police, for it to work. Otherwise, we are all in, in, in trouble. All in trouble, and that's um, 
from Mr. Bush there. But for now, we are also going to look at the other story. Well, since the announcement of the first case of the COVID-19 in the Gambia, we found that um, these tests um, have been done at the Medical Research Institute, uh, medical, medical Research Council, I, I beg your pardon, at the MRC. Now it appears the treatment of these um, confirmed cases are going to be done at the sanatorium in Banjo. Uh, for more details on that story, um, let's bring you this. As our country readies itself in expectation to register more COVID-19 cases, Progress has been made for quick and effective response to the pandemic. There is now a national treatment center where over 100 COVID-19 patients will be hosted for medical attention. There are already 10 rooms made ready for patients with mild symptoms. Abu Karjan is in charge of the clinical treatment center. So the capacity of this place is about um, 150 patients. That's what we are expected to have host in this place. So this place you are seeing is just for the ones who are very stable. There are at least 50 personnel, including medical doctors and nurses, who will be attending to the healthcare needs of patients in the treatment center. There's a specific ward designated for the healthcare workers with a stock of personal protective gear and other medical facilities for effective performance of their duties. There are two other places that have been identified in SL and Masakonko. So they're working on getting those places prepared because we definitely know that this place is not... Um, if we have a, a very large number of patients, this, this facility would not be enough. So if those facilities are ready, instead of transporting a patient all the way from wherever they are to Banjo here, they can just be taken to the nearby treatment facility. COVID-19 patients in critical conditions will be referred to a main hall in the treatment center equipped with beds and treatment facilities. There is also an intensive care unit with ventilators for patients with breathing problems. Utilizing some of the money raised through the GCCI's two recent telethons and from other donors for the fight against COVID-19. The words for the patients with mild symptoms have been installed with TV sets, air conditioners, overhead fans and toilet facilities. Health officials of the Ministry of Health also told QTV that washing machines, freezers and other household appliances as well as internet access are among the list of necessary items that the money will bring to the treatment center. It's uh, important that we don't leave this to government alone. And I'm sure you've seen how proactive the community public has been, even at the, to us to fix this place. The, the public has been very, very reactive. Um, you've seen the GCCI, you've seen TAF, um, TAF, TAF and GIA, that's TAF construction and uh, mobilizing funds from people to come and help us fix the place. The World Health Organization's country office in the Gambia is also giving its technical and material support to the Ministry of Health by building the capacity of healthcare workers for an appropriate and sustainable response to COVID-19. The treatment guidelines to be followed in the treatment center will be based on WHO standards. Dr. Shamida Larivja, a disease prevention and control officer of the WHO country office, advises the public to strengthen preventive measures to control the spread of COVID-19. We want everybody to protect themselves, their family, their community, their um, the country as a whole. That is what we need because we can do what we can from our side. But if the precautions are not taken by the public, we will not be able to contain our, the outbreak just by ourselves. We need the public to do that for us. A Chinese tech titan and founder of the online sales giant Alibaba, Jack Ma, made a big donation of 1.5 million medical equipment, including laboratory kits for the fight against the novel coronavirus. Jack Ma's donation is to all 54 countries in Africa. The Gambia is expected to receive its consignment of personal protective gear and test kits on Sunday. Mohamed Lam Choi, QTV News. That's Mamoudou Lam in Choi there, um, giving that report about a um, state of preparedness as far as the Gambia is concerned, where people who have been tested positive for this COVID-19 are going to be taken care of at the sanatorium in Banjul. Um, Mamoudou Mboj, just quickly before we go, um, uh, quite uh, some good news there, but uh, the facility is not quite ready yet. They're talking about um, bringing internet facility there, um, trying to fix uh, certain things, and not being able to cope with um, a bigger number. The, the capacity, we've seen it there, about 100. And we were just earlier talking about the potential spike. We've seen it, that, that spike when it comes. That is one place, I'm not sure what's the capacity at MRC and where else. These are all in urban areas. What about in the, in the provinces, in the hinterland? Do we have anything like that there? So 
yes, of course, this is good, but you need you, you, you need a lot more to do. We do not know what's going to happen, but we must be prepared for the worst case scenario. This is, this is really how risk management, this is how we should think now, for the worst case scenario. We have to be realistic. And, and, and as the, um, um, Shamila ja there said, it's us now. Self-police goes, goes back to individuals. We must really be mature. I mean, throughout we've been hearing people having all kinds of quaint views on these things. Really, almost sort of a pre-scientific kind of mindset. This is not the time for that. <laughs> this is not the time to experiment with ideas. So, yes. <laughs> yes. This is time to go for the conventional scientific proper view and stick with that. Yeah. It's time to really re listen to the president now. Yes, definitely. Time to listen to the president. Uh, Mr. Jaramie, on a final note, mm -hmm. people who leave um, from hand to mouth, as we commonly call it in Africa, do you think the government should have any food incentive for, you know, for the hardest hit people? I think there will have to be. And it was good to hear not only the president, but also a gentleman who was in the clip we just saw talk about the help that the private sector been giving. Um, he talked about the GCCI and the telethon that they've run on, on, on QTV. Some of the funds have gone directly to that sanatorium because people have been asking where the funds are going. So it was good to hear somebody say that some of those funds have gone towards that. And I think we'll have to call on the private sector to say, give government a hand here. We're not an oil rich country. We don't have minerals and so on. And I think this is a time when the private sector have to step up. Every private sector uh, business you go on, they have on their website about their corporate and social responsibility. Well, guess what? This is now where we call your bluff. Show us. Don't just have it in words. Have it in deeds. This is the time for them to step up. Time to step up. Let's join efforts to make sure that we fight against the spread of COVID-19 coronavirus, as is it known globally. It's a pandemic. It's already in the Gambia, and we have to make some efforts as individuals asked a group of people as a country to fight against the spread of the coronavirus. On that note, we say um, a special thank you to everyone who is watching this special broadcast. Well, it was meant to be normal news, but there is something bigger in our hands. And we wish you all the best. Have a pleasant night. Bye for now. You become so frustrated, and there, right there, someone, something, just rescues you. If Ankanta, lean on us whenever you run out of credit. Now, upgraded dial star 393 hours to borrow up to $50 anytime. QCell, soon you sim, soon you boss, we innovate. Orders follow. Terms and conditions apply. Join us every Sunday for QTV's news review show, The Week in Review. QTV's Week in Review is the show that brings you a weekly, in-depth look at all the week's big stories from home and abroad. Each week, our host will be joined in studio by a guest for a discussion as they delve into the stories behind the headlines in politics, current affairs, sport, the arts, and more. Make it your weekly Sunday date. QTV's The Week in Review, every Sunday morning at 10 a.m.
COVID-19 is an infectious disease caused by a new coronavirus introduced to humans for the first time. It is spread from person to person, mainly through the droplets produced when an infected person speaks, coughs or sneezes. These droplets can land in the mouths or noses of people who are nearby. These droplets are too heavy to travel far in the air. They only travel approximately one meter and quickly settle on surfaces. This is the reason person-to-person -person spread is happening mainly between close contacts. The exact time that the virus can survive on surfaces is not yet known. So it is wise to clean surfaces regularly, particularly in the vicinity of people infected with COVID-19. Hands touch many surfaces, which can be contaminated with the virus. You should therefore avoid touching your eyes, nose or mouth, since contaminated hands can transfer the virus from the surface to yourself. When coughing or sneezing, cover your mouth and nose with the bend of your elbow or use a disposable tissue. If a tissue is used,